Let's talk about buffer tanks for a minute. And why in the world would you even want one? And what does a buffer tank do? Well, buffer tanks are simply there because when the boiler output is higher than your minimum system load, we have to have somewhere to store the BTUs. Otherwise, the boiler loop temp is going to go up and we're going to short cycle. So if we can't get enough turn down on our boiler to get below the minimum load, we have to make sure we have enough water volume in our loop to absorb the BTUs. Again, typically it's not a problem, but every once in a while we can run into an issue, and so we want to make sure you understand where to put the buffer tank and how to size for it. Let's just say we need a buffer tank. Well, where, if we do need one, where are we going to put it? We can put it in the primary closest to the boilers, right? That sound, kind of sounds like it makes sense. We're going to be right near the boilers where we need them. Well, if we do that, then the tank serves no purpose at all when the boilers and the primary pumps are off. Well, we, all our load is out in the secondary loop. And so if we're pulling out BTUs there, but we don't see the buffer tank, the secondary loop doesn't pull out of the buffer tank, then we won't be able to use that buffer and those BTUs. And so the buffer tank won't serve any purpose. Well, well let's move it out to the secondary then where the BTUs are needed. Well, if we do that, then we run into the problem that the secondary flow rate is really low. Let's say we're at a low load period, which is typically when you need a buffer tank, then the boilers can short cycle or shut off due to high temperature limits because we're not pulling up BTUs out of that buffer tank at really low flow in the secondary. So for us, we feel like the best location is right here in the primary secondary connection. Make the buffer tank your primary secondary connection and be your decoupler. When we do that, then the boilers can see the tank and the secondary loop pump can see the tank and everyone gets to use and benefit from that big buffer of water. It provides that system volume to the boilers, even with the really low secondary flow rates. The nice part about having the buffer tank here is it also serves as your common pipe or your decoupler in a primary or secondary system. And you can even use that as an air separator if you add an air vent. How do we know if we need a buffer tank? Well, how much system volume do you need? Well, here's an example. Let's take our 2 million BT boiler again, right? And assume that it has a turn down of 4 to 1. That means that the minimum BTU output is 500,000 BTUs in this particular boiler. Now, the manufacturer is going to rec recommend a minimum runtime, maybe 5 to 10 minutes. We say 10 minutes just to prevent short cycling. We would like for you to bring the boiler on and allow it to run for a few minutes. Don't short cycle equipment. That ruins equipment. So, here we are with our 104 degree set point again. And remember our 12 degree temperature control operating range. 146 degrees the boiler cuts off and 134 degrees the boiler cuts on. And let's assume a minimum load of about 50,000 BTUs. Now if you don't know what your minimum load is or you don't want to calculate it, assume zero. It's a great assumption. It will not get you into trouble. You might have a bigger buffer tank than necessary, but you won't be short flagging the equipment and ruining the warranty. So. How do we figure out the system volume? Well, we're going to take that runtime we want, that 10 minutes, and we're going to take the difference between the minimum output of the boiler and the minimum load, and we're going to multiply those two. Now we'll take the tank temperature rise, which is that 12 degree operating range, remember not our delta T on the design, times our constant 8.33 times 60 or 500. And here's our answer. In this particular instance, with a four to one turn down, a two million BTU boiler, our system volume needs to be 750 gallons. So we can absorb all those BTUs when the boiler is at its minimum fire and we're at our minimum load. We've got to have a place to put that extra 450,000 BTUs. If you only have 600 gallons in your storage, in your volume, calculated in your loop, then you might need a 150 gallon buffer tank here to keep yourself out of trouble. Well, what if we have a boiler um, that has a 25 to 1 turn down? Interestingly enough, we sell those 80,000 BTU minimum output. Well, same 10 minutes of runtime, same system operating parameters, 140 degree set point, 134 the boiler cuts on, 146 the boiler cuts off, and our minimum load hasn't changed at 50,000 BTUs, but now we have a difference of 30,000. Where do we put those extra 30,000 BTUs? We run our formula again, and we figure out that our minimum system volume in this particular application is 50 gallons. Could be the same exact system, same exact loads, same 2 million BTU boiler design. One has a high turn down rate and one doesn't. So keep in mind here, our fire tube product has a very large turn down rate, typically here 25 to 1 in certain sizes. Our water tube product has a lower turn down rate, 4 to 1, 5 to 1, which is often the case with lots of products out there. 
So if you specified a fire two product and accepted a water two product, you might not get the turndown rate you were expecting, and you might need to add a buffer tank. Keep in mind too that the water two products don't hold as much water as the fire two products. Thanks for listening, and if you have any questions, look us up at jmpco.com. Thank you. Bye-bye.